on the road. Where's McIntyre? Don't worry about it. He'll be here. Yeah, you better, man. He's got the plans. Well, it's about time you showed. Jeez, come on, McIntyre. You get it? Piece of cake. Give me a hand with this. What do you got in here, lead? Gentlemen, what I have before you might astound, might even amaze you. But remember, we are pioneers. Those of us who journey forth We'll set the standards for those who follow. Oh, come on, we haven't got a night. Anybody got a match? And as we, the graduating class, bid a fond farewell to our esteemed professors, it seems only fitting to honor the one man whose dedication and endurance... A motorcycle? Mm -hmm. A motorcycle? Mm -hmm. What kind of graduation present is that? Well, you give me a present, I'll give him mine. Fine, I'll, I'll give him a crash helmet. He already has one. Much longer. Try to be patient. I mean, how many times are you going to see your son graduate? Oh, he looks so handsome today, doesn't he? When did he shave the beard? Three days ago. Of course, you'd have known that if you made an effort to see him a little more often. The phone rings at both ends, you know. So how can we forget that man who has been the captain of that ship? Let's not argue today, Trapper. Who's arguing? The important thing is how well he's turned out. We can both be proud of that. It's not everyone who gets an internship at Boston Medical. He's never known the meaning of... He was accepted at Boston Medical. He didn't tell you? And so it <laughs> he never tells me anything. What, well, now he is? He probably just wanted to surprise you. Well, oh, he did that. <clears throat> Boston Med. <laughs> Dr. Walden T. Willen. Please, sir, take a bow. <laughs> On this, the day of your retirement, we, the graduating class, pay a special tribute to you now. We want everyone here and those who will follow to remember you, sir, as we have. Dr. Walden T. Willens, this one's for you. <laughs> You put me in an awkward position, McIntyre. You're right, sir. I, I guess I have. You should have seen the man's face. Willens was almost blue. Really? Blue, sir? No, I've no idea how you managed to pull it off. I take full blame, sir. But that's got to be just about the wildest stunt I've ever seen. You liked it? Liked it? Old horse faces never look so good. When, when, when I think of this expression... When, when, <laughs> this is pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd spit a gun. <laughs> but, uh, I have to tell you that uh, this totally 86 is your internship at Boston Medical. I beg your pardon? Yes, yes. Now that, that was a very funny idea. It was a funny statue. It was a great statue. But it was the wrong statue to mess around with, son. Oh, come on. Everyone around here hates Willens. Besides, I've already been accepted. What's he got to do with Boston Medical? Well, as it turns out, Willens has a little pull there. It seems his ancestors founded the place. Of all the statues, on the whole campus, you had to pick on Willens. I worked hard for that appointment, damn it. I deserve that internship. They, they can't just turn me down. Oh, but they can. And they have. And you're out. They couldn't take a joke, that's all. That's all? Hey, it's their problem, not mine. What are your plans? I'm good. I'm good, okay? There's a million places they'll take me, no sweat. I wouldn't be too sure, buddy. 
I guarantee you the word is out. Oh, who cares? East Coast stuffed shirts, who needs them? You do. But you just blew it because of a lousy little prank. Lousy? That prank will no doubt be praised for generations. Just, uh, like the one you pulled at Dartmouth. What prank? You should take a look at his yearbook. They practically devoted a whole page. Uh, you made your point. What prank? Besides, all I did was some much-needed surgery correcting an obvious anatomical error. Willens never looked better. Probably get me written uh, up you the and Melanie, look, I think I've really got to get Trapper, you. Trapper, wait a minute. I'll be famous. Okay, okay. Come on, Dad, Mom. You think the kid doesn't have a plan? I got my feelers out. I graduated fourth out of 380, folks. That's got to amount to something. Hey, Goldstein, uh, I found the stones. You want your album back? Oh, uh, wait a minute. I'll be right back. Trapper, can you do something? Like what? I don't know. He's your son. Well, you heard him. He's got it all solved. Solved? That's a solution? Well, he's young, he's bright. Too bright. And he happens to be fourth out of a class of 380. He'll find something. But not Boston Med. Well, something else. It's a good lesson for him. Trapper, you've got to do something. Did you hear him ask for help? If he wanted help, he would have... Come asked. on, JT! This ain't practice broken! No, he wouldn't. Easy, go. See what happened to your sense of humor. He's too pig-headed, just like you. That's it? That's all you're gonna do? Well, what do you expect me to do? Trap, you can't let him blow a whole year waiting on an internship. Oh, no, wait a minute. Not so fast, my friend. What is this you can't stuff? I didn't have anything to do with his losing that internship. Okay, forget Boston. What about here? He wouldn't want that. Did you say that? Come on, it's nepotism. No, it's not. Oh, I don't want to be accused of it. Who'd accuse you? You hear anybody accusing Peterson for bringing his kid into radiology? Not to mention Grayson's daughter, Slocum's niece, Huddleston's nephew, Riverside... Riverside, my God, talk about nepotism. I'm telling you, Trap, if you were my son. I don't want to hear it. But give me a break, will you? Oh, <laughs> What's up? Circus. No, a tumbling troupe from the People's Republic of China. The hotel they were staying at caught fire. It's smoke inhalation, nothing serious. But you wouldn't know it from all the suits walking around. So, take your pick. Room five, please. Thank you. Walk in the Walk in the John, John, finally, where have you been? Well, uh, well never mind. Let's see. Room five, please, John. It's urgent. Hmm? Thank you. Well, John, uh, just give them a few words of reassurance. Uh, tell them what they want to hear. Who? State Department. State Department? We've got top security surrounding these people and the entire People's Republic of China to answer to. Now, as long as these people are here, I'm putting you in charge. Why me? Well, you're the chief of surgery. Who better? I know we can count on you, John. I'll do what I can. Well, I, um... I thought I'd crash at your place a couple more nights, then move on. Do a little traveling, a little brain surgery here and there. No, uh, actually, I've, uh, I got a lot of things lined up. John, your father has something to tell you. Doesn't he? Yes. And since the main course seems to be taking forever, this, this is as good a time as any. Uh-oh. Sounds serious. What is it? I got till sundown to pack my bags and get out of town, is that it? Your father has managed to pull a few strings and get you into the internship program. You're kidding, Boston? No, here. San Francisco Memorial, your father's hospital. Here? With dad? I know it doesn't give you a lot of time, John. I, I, you have to start next week. And, uh, you arranged it? Wasn't that terrific? Melanie, you may not want to stay here. Of course he does. Well, I, uh... I thought we ought to arrange something. Huh? Well, you don't have to decide right this minute. No, that's not true, Melanie. He does. No, 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 that's okay. I've, uh, I've made up my mind. Thanks a lot, Dad. It's very generous of you. But no thanks. What? No. Why? No, you don't think anything else will work out, do you? No, that Your is Your father not never no, said well, you're that. You're wrong. Come you're on. wrong, so don't worry about oh, it, okay? Boy. Sit down. Something else will work oh, here out. Here we go fine. again. Just mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. JT? 
E.T. McIntyre, you stop right here. Will you explain to me what that was all about? He doesn't want me there. Well, you know your father better than that. Yeah, yeah, I do. You think I don't know you twisted his arm? Believe me, if he didn't want you here, he wouldn't have done what he did. If he wanted me here, he would have asked. When I first came up, he would have volunteered. All my years in med school, you think he ever asked me where I wanted to go, what I wanted to be? If you wanted me, he would have asked then. Maybe he was waiting for you to oh, ask Oh, come him. on, Mom. You heard what he said. He thought he had to arrange something. That's how much faith he has in you me. You know that's not true. Forget it, Mom. Who needs him? I'm not going to be stuck in some lousy two-bit hospital. I'll show him I got better places I can go. You just wait a minute. That lousy two-bit hospital you're referring to was good enough to support your family, get you braces, send you through medical school, and has been the lifelong sacrifice of your father and this entire family. So don't you ever let me hear you say you'll find something better. You'll be lucky if you find anything half as good. Let me start the light behind. Yeah, yeah, could, could we maybe uh, sit down for a sec? My feet are getting sore. Listen, your feet ain't seen nothing yet. You're gonna have days when you're on your feet so long, you're gonna wish for sore. Okay? Follow me. Hey, it's your shoes. They're all wrong. You need treads like this. I got another pair. I'll rent them to you. Hey, thanks. Okay, troops, I turn you over to Dr. Gates. Good luck. Doctor. Hello, Doctor. troops. How you doing? I'd like you to meet Mrs. Hodges. Hello, Mrs. Hodges. Hi. Ah, for me? The guy down the hall never miss it. Mrs. Hodges is a 52-year-old secretary who was admitted yesterday with recurrent colicky lower abdominal pain. So far, she's had a BE and an upper GI with a small bowel follow-through. Chronic cholecystitis. Hyalonephritis. Yeah, I'm not grilling for a diagnosis yet. We'll take a look at her x-rays, then I'll start grilling. Uh, don't worry. He's not going to ask you. Oh, I'm not worried. Oh, well, I'm a little nervous. I've never been in a hospital before. Uh, hey, don't feel bad. Neither have we. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check in on you later. Oh, see you a little later. Thank you. After you. No, after you. McIntyre. McIntyre. John McIntyre. Shame on you. What? What? Your own flesh and blood in this hospital, and I had to find out the news for myself. <laughs> oh, that news. <laughs> I wish I'd known. You know what I would have done? I would have brought him some of my yogurt muffins. Remember how he used to like those when he was little? Still does. I'm so glad there's going to be another McIntyre for me to make healthy. You're a hopeless case. You must be so proud. <laughs> ah, there he is. Morning, Stan. Morning, morning. Uh-huh. Well? Well what? You know. How's it feel? What? You know, Padre Nino, father and son. Must be a pretty proud moment, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think he likes? Italian, seafood, what? Why? I want to take him out to lunch, invite him out with the big guys. After all, he is the chief's son. Deserves a little bit better than your run of the mill intern treatment. Yeah, well, I would like to talk with you a little bit about that, Stan. He is an intern, just like any other intern. Now, I don't want any special luncheons, special schedules, privileges or favors, okay? Sure, sure, John. I mean it, Stan. No special privileges. Dr. John. McIntyre, please call the page operator. Your badge. Dr. McIntyre, please call Thank the you. operator. 
by Dr. McIntyre? Uh, you're being paged. Well, thank you. And the man from the State Department's looking for you. I know. Oh, I met your son this morning. He's cute. Thank you. Right, charming. Looks a lot like you. Yeah, uh, McIntyre, you got a call for Oh, Dad, right. McIntyre. I guess, of course, McIntyre, it'd, it'd be for you. I'm, I'll just, uh... McIntyre. Mm-hmm. Oh, just a minute. John, uh... It's for you. Oh, thanks. Um, would you mind not parking your bike in my space? Well, it said McIntyre. It also said chief of surgery. Yeah, this is McIntyre. Yeah? Yeah! Yeah! Okay, here we have a troop of tumblers who got caught in a hotel fire. No burns, nothing serious. We're treating them for smoke inhalation. There's no serious pulmonary or laryngeal signs. Well, Chad, it looks like their condition's cleared up. Yeah, it has, but the State Department wants to keep them here until they get the official clearance, diplomatic relations and all that. So, our job is to keep them happy. Like this? Yeah, they're not the cheeriest bunch of guys, are they? Well, that's red tape, what can I say? Poor oral intake, they're not eating. Yeah, I know. We're doing the best we can. Maybe they're homesick. Maybe. Okay, let's go. We got some more patients to see. How you doing? Hi. How you doing? Here comes the whole group to play. What's the disease? Group me, Mr. Shulman. How you doing, Lawrence? Mr. Shulman was admitted two days ago, complaining of weakness, incoordination, difficulty walking. Show him that nothing moves, too. The weakness has progressed. He's unable to stand up, and he has a flaccid paralysis. How about electromyography? Well, we've already done that. Ah, it's a red letter day. I've even got the big chief. Group, for those of you who haven't met, this is Dr. McIntyre, our chief of surgery. Doctor. Hello. Hello, Mr. Shulman. What does that electro, what do you call it, tell you? Well, I'll be taking a look at it later this afternoon. Okay, do I hear any possibilities? Poliomyelitis? We've considered that. And you've earned a spinal tap? Yes, but I was asking for possibilities. Yes. A spinal cord tumor. Good, another possibility. We've also ordered a myelogram. Could be a toxic reaction. Any other ideas? Syringomyelia or polyneuritis? Very good. Another possibility. I'll um, check back with you later, Mr. Shulman. Should know more by then. Who's that? Shulman. Still no answer. EMG is normal, spinal taps normal, myelogram checks out. Our mystery man. You know, he could be right. Who? JT, your son, the intern? Maybe. Why is it that I get the feeling you're ignoring him? Why would I ignore him? Yesterday in Shulman's room with the interns, every time you said something, you looked the other way. I did? Maybe I was just being objective. Maybe a little too objective. Thank you. Uh, let me know what you want to do with these Shulman tests. Ah. Uh. Ah. Ah. Ah, this is ridiculous. You're fine. Y you're really fine. But y you too. But your, your, your ears, your nose, your throat, your respiration, it's fine. So, what do you say? Last one of the pool's a rotten egg. Look, Rex. Rex, what am I gonna do with you? Th this food is fine. 
Look, I know you guys don't like it here, but there's really nothing we can do. So you're just gonna have to relax and make the best of it. Order anything you like. Uncle Sam's paying for it. A bed. A bed. Cutaneous lesions, ulcerative and destructive granulomas, bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Anybody want to get a pizza? Leishmaniasis or Kayla Azar? I don't know. McIntyre, what do you think? You've seen 317? Patient Sikipnik, right? Right. With a non-productive cough? Uh-huh. Just came off corticosteroids. Could be pneumocystis. Pneumocystis? Of course. Why didn't I think of that? Pneumocystis, sure. You want pizza? I was asleep. Hey, McIntyre. You want to go get a pizza? Maybe later. Okay, everybody, it's party time. Oh. So you're going to be a tough audience, eh? All right, now listen and listen tight. This is your doctor speaking. Now, we have just about had it with your crummy moods around here lately. And I've decided it's about time we do something about it. I am going to resort to any and every cheap trick in the book. So what do you say? We get off the dime and have some fun around here. Hong Kong. Leave me, Mr. Chairman, and I think I can speak for my father, Dr. Stanley Riverside Sr. It has been a pleasure having you and your people here. Well, not exactly a pleasure. It's unfortunate that they had to be here. Not that we didn't enjoy their company. I think they know that, Dr. Riverside. Let's just get on with it, shall we? Right, right, yes. Well, I, I just wanted to stress that uh, while his people have been here, they have received the absolute maximum of care, the best of care and doctors. People like, uh, well, like our chief of surgery, Dr. John McIntyre. Uh, Dr. McIntyre has personally overtaken the care of your people. Isn't that right, John? Yes, all we have to do is sign the release. Dr. McIntyre. Not now, Miss Brancusi. Uh, if you don't mind, sir. The Chinese tumblers, they're all gone. Gone? 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 Sola? All nine of them? That's impossible. Where are they? <laughs> Check the therapy room. This is terrible, terrible. We could have an international crisis on our hands. They're not in the parking lot. Oh, this is going to ruin our hospital. Uh, let me know if you hear anything. I don't know how they could have gotten by me. Well, they're a tumbling team, Stan. Maybe they just rolled right out of here. I resent your cavalier attitude. He's right, Gates. This is serious business. Someone absconded with those patients, and when I catch a so-and-so dinner... What a good time they must have had. <laughs> right. Everybody. 
everyone's back and no harm done. Might as well notify the State Department of Security. Oh, good idea. Mm. And I, I know, I know, it's a little past curfew. But look at them. That's the first time they've smiled since they've been here. And hey, I finally got them to eat. Don't ever pull a stunt like that again. Maybe he bent protocol a little, but he didn't do anything wrong. Those guys were homesick. He made them better. Isn't that what a doctor's supposed to do? I might have done the same thing. Oh, I see. You understand him. Is that it? I just don't think what he did was so wrong. Fine. The next time he pulls a stunt like that, you answer for him, okay? company. Who are you? Your doctor, Mr. Shulman. McIntyre, remember? Oh. How's anybody sleep in those beds? How you doing? Isn't it a little early for you? Oh, uh, you were first on my rounds this shift. You look awful. We're even. Hey, level with me, Doc. How am I doing? You're holding your own. Any chance of me not making it? I want to know. Come on, where's the old showman fight? Open the drawer. Go on. Look in there. You see a little black address book? Yeah, that's it. I want you to call someone for me. She's a friend of mine. Mr. Shulman, there's really no reason. Go on. If wife ever finds out about her, I'll... I won't have to ask what my chances of survival are. I want you to hold on to that book. In case anything happens, I'd feel better knowing you've got it. Okay? Nothing's gonna happen. 
but if it makes you feel better, okay. Her name is Franny. Franny Boland. I've got her in there, under Frank. Frank Boland. Idaho Springs. Where is that? Colorado. Colorado. Got it. See you later. I really found it this time. What? Schumann's diagnosis. Tick paralysis. Rocky Mountain wood tick. It's right here. And here. Hold on. You don't know this for a fact. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Listen, uh, this is between you and me, okay? Yeah. Schumann finally confessed. You know where he was a month ago? As far as his wife or anybody else knew, he was in L.A. on a business trip. But actually, the old geezer was shacked up with a broad in some mountain cabin in Colorado, but he didn't tell anybody, so it's not on his history chart. And it all makes sense. The, the weakness, the incoordination, the difficulty walking, the flaccid paralysis, it's okay. all right. Okay, fine, we'll check it out. It sounds as good as anything else we've tried. You think so? Yeah, we'll check it out. What do we got to lose? You want an apple? Sure. Oh, listen. Um, don't tell my old man, okay? In case I'm wrong, which I'm not. But if I was, I, I wouldn't want him to, to know. Like, he'd probably find out. These are great apples. Mrs. Hodges, 407. I'm here. Pressure's dropping. She's shocky. What is it? 80 over 50, severe abdominal pains. Yeah, the abdomen is rigid. Probably perforated. All right, look, call OR. We're going to have to go in. Why didn't anybody catch this sooner? Well, she was awake at 3.20 this morning, complaining of pain in the right lower quadrant, but nothing unusual. What was she given? Meperidine. 100 milligrams. 100 milligrams? 100 milligrams shouldn't knock her out like this. Must have had a hell of a lot more than that. Who ordered it? Well, who was it? McIntyre. Look, it's gonna be okay. She's gonna be all right. She's gotta be all right. Your patient had a perforated diverticulum. Should have been in surgery hours ago. But she's going to be okay. Well, we irrigated the peritoneal cavity, put her on IV antibiotics, and let's just hope that she doesn't wind up with a rip-roaring peritonitis. Now, that was your signature, wasn't it? Yes. How much did you give her? Too much. Dr. Gates, can I talk to you for a minute? There you are. Ma. I know I'm the last person in the world you want to see right now, but as I haven't seen you in days and you're staying here, I thought you need clean things. Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks. Everything all right? Oh, great. Great. Yeah, you sound great. Oh, just a little zonked out, that's all. Well, as long as everything's all right. Oh, oh, this came for you today. Boston Medical. I knew it was important. I knew you'd want to see it.
Well? Huh? What does it say? Oh, uh... They're just, uh, formalizing their rejection with a letter. That's all. You know how they are. Just, uh... They love to rub it in. And they can't use you, they can't use you. Honey, I'm sorry. That's all right. Better get back to the old grindstone. Thanks for the laundry. What about dinner? Huh? Sunday night? Oh, sure. Sure. I thought I'd go over some of the journals. I just had a long talk with Mailer. Oh? Mm hmm He had a confession to make. Seems uh, he gave Mrs. Hodges 100 milligrams of meperidine last night. Forgot to mark it on the chart. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So when you gave it, you had no way of knowing. Hmm. How about that? Yeah, how about that? He also told me that while we were in surgery, he told you about his mistake. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess he did. So, in other words, you were covering for Naylor, taking the rap for him, right? Yeah, well, you know Naylor. I mean, he's, he's still nervous, unsure of himself. I, I just thought I'd help him out, that's all. Help him out, yeah. What do you think, you're the genius? Hmm? You're the whiz kid, you can afford to take the rap for everybody else. Hey, I, I didn't think of something, I'm... pal. You are not that good. Nobody's that good. You're gonna have a hard enough time just scraping by with your own mistakes, Einstein, so don't go playing the hero for anybody else. You'd be lucky if you could just save yourself. Another thing. We checked out your theory on Schulman. You were right. It is tick paralysis. We're treating him now. See you. Hmm. All right, I confess I'm a meddling mother. I couldn't stay away. <laughs> well, what can I tell you? How's it going? Oh, great, great. Really? That's what your son said, too. I didn't believe him either. What's going on? Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I don't think I did him any favors by bringing him here. Maybe you're expecting too much from him. Look, Melanie, he doesn't want to be here. He wants to be at Boston Medical. He earned it. He deserved it. He probably thinks I'm the albatross around his neck. Well, albatross, before you try and convict yourself, you may want to see this. They reinstated him. But he told me it was just another form letter, another rejection. Okay, so I dished it out of the trash. The point is, he wasn't going to tell us. He had a choice, and he decided to stick it out with you. You know what? I think that's what he's wanted all along. How you doing, Mr. Shulman? How am I doing? I'm doing fine. Look at this. Hard to believe removing a little tick like that could make me feel so good. Yeah, we well, still want to take it easy for a couple more days. Oh, I, uh, 
Got some for you. Here's a little critter that caused you all the trouble. <laughs> Rocky Mountain tick, huh? I even put it in a little jar. That's great, kid. That's great. So you're the squirt that figured it out. Yeah. Actually, the other uh, squirts around here would have beat me to it if you hadn't kept that mountain retreat such a secret. Yeah. Let's keep it a secret. Okay? It's a deal. Hey! And I want my book back. Later. You get some rest. You, uh, had dinner? Dinner? They're still doing that? <laughs> Come on, you gotta eat. Yeah, uh, I'm on call tonight. Gotcha. Dad? Maybe another time. Sure. Good night. Night. Oh, uh... Keep up the good work, doctor. <laughs>